Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Turn to the Lord and his strength. Constantly seek his face. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to this Holy Mass. We pray especially for this morning for our confirmation candidates that will be confirmed by Archbishop Brisbane at 11 o'clock. We pray that the Lord may guide them by the gift of the Holy Spirit and those gifts that they receive from the Holy Spirit they will use wisely in their lives ahead of them. Do we remember them especially in this Mass? Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I greatly sin in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sin the menace of our lasting life. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-loving God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, the Lord has saved his people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country, and gather them from the furthest part of the earth. Among them the blind and the lame, the woman with a child, and her who is in travail together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will make them walk by brooks of water, in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
What great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. What great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. When the Lord brought back the exiles of Zion, we thought we were dreaming. Then was our mouth full with laughter, on our tongues songs of joy. What great deeds the Lord worked for us, indeed we were glad. Then the nations themselves said, What great deeds the Lord worked for them. What great deeds the Lord worked for us, indeed we were glad. What great deeds the Lord worked for us, indeed we were glad. Bring back our exiles, O Lord, as streams in the south. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. What great deeds the Lord worked for us, indeed we were glad. They go out, they go out full of tears, bearing seed for the sowing. They come back, they come back with their song, bearing their sheaves. What great deeds the Lord worked for us, indeed we were glad. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Every high priest chosen from among men is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can deal gently with the ignorant and the wayward, since he himself is beset with weakness. Because of this he is bound to offer sacrifice for his own sins, as well as for those of the people. And one does not take the honour upon himself, but he is called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but, by, but was appointed by him who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says all also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Our Saviour Christ Jesus abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord God. At that time, as Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, rise, he is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Master, let me receive my sight. 
And Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to your Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, in that gospel, we hear this wonderful story of Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus. And you can imagine what life could have been like for a person like Bartimaeus, who was blind. He was blind to everything. He lived in many ways in a world of his own, in total darkness. He would have relied on the sounds around him to try and give him some perception of what was going on. He would have been, in many ways, leading a very lonely life. In fact, he was seen as someone being punished by God because of his blindness, being a, seen as a curse from God. And Bartimaeus, in this blindness, in this darkness, hears about Jesus of Nazareth walking down the road. And he knows that people don't want to associate themselves with him. But somehow he must have heard about this man, Jesus of Nazareth, about how he had healed people of their blindness. And so he cries out. And it's very interesting to see that he cries out, not just Jesus, but he says, Son of David, have mercy on me. He recognized that Jesus indeed was the Christ. Because when you read the Psalms and you read the prophets, they all talk about the Messiah being the Son of David, that he would come from the dynasty of David. And so Bartimaeus already there, we see the seed of faith in the heart and soul of Bartimaeus. And he sees, we see that step of that little bit of faith that he has is what makes him call out. And no matter that the people were telling him to keep quiet, he just carries on shouting all the hour. And then you can imagine what it must have been like him when he stopped, when Jesus stopped. And then they say to him, he's calling you. And what happens? Bartimaeus, we are told, throws off his coat. The one possession that he has that can give him comfort, that keeps him warm at night, he leaves that behind. Because he has his faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And in what our Lord Jesus Christ could do for him. And when Jesus says to him, Jesus knew exactly what Bartimaeus wanted. But Jesus says to him, what do you want me to do? And what does he say? Master, let me receive my sight. And wonderfully, he gets his sight back. And that then calls him, not so much to see what around him is, but sees him at that step of faith a little bit further and he follows Jesus Christ. And not so much just following him down the road till they were out of Jericho. He follows in the footsteps of Christ. He becomes a disciple of Christ. And this happens for us as well. We too are blind at times. We might not be physically blind. We might be able to go out and see the trees and see the beauty of the mountains. We can go down to the beach and admire everything that came down there. 
We can go climb Table Mountain and survey the peninsula. We can do that during the day and then at night we can go up there across the Table Mountain and then Signal Hill and we look over the city and all the bright lights and the, the busyness of the, of the city. And that would bring us great joy. And very often when we see these things, we comment about the creation of God and how beautiful it is. But Jesus wants to teach us that it's not that there is a blindness to other things in our lives. That we all might be suffering from blindness. And that at times is our blindness to sin. Because how often do we commit particular sins and we gloss over them? Or we don't even want to look at them. We don't want to own them. We blind ourselves to them as unimportant. Or just say, that's the way I am. That is who I am. There's nothing I can do about it. And what happens when Jesus gives us that invitation to come to him? When he calls us, as he called Bartimaeus, what happens? Are we prepared to jump up and let go of the cloak of our past and say, here I am. Are we prepared to not allow the guilt of our past to take hold of us when we come to Jesus and we confess our sins? And we confess with sincerity of heart that yes, Lord, I have sinned. I have done things that I should not have done. I take ownership of it. I admit it and I say, I need your forgiveness. I say, as Bartimaeus says, Son of David, have mercy on me, a sinner. And when Jesus yields us of their blindness, do we let go of the guilt that that entails? And we say, I have been given, been forgiven in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe that when he heals me of the blindness of my sin, that any guilt attached to that is wiped away as well, forever forgotten. That it won't be brought up again unless, yes, we, we commit that sin again. But then we mustn't lose hope. And we must say, yes, Lord, I, I've sinned again, maybe. And that is the reality of the situation that we find our sins. We sincerely, when we come to the Lord, and we confess our sins, we are sincere. That yes, I'm sorry for these sins. And we say, yes, I'm going to try and not sin again. But unfortunately, we do sin. But that's not to say, well, okay, I'll do that's the way it is, and just leave it there. Again, we can come to the Lord and say, Lord, I have sinned. And again, He heals us of that blindness. And again, we have that opportunity to let go of the guilt and know that Jesus has forgiven us. This is the wonderful thing about our Lord Jesus Christ, that he comes into our life, that he brings us healing, that he heals us of any blindness in our faith that we might have, and he gives our sight back, our sight to become a disciple of his, to follow his way of love, to follow his way of hope, to follow his way of faith. And that doesn't mean to say that the road is going to be nice and smooth. We know along the road we stumble, as everyone stumbles. Just as Jesus, as he was in this parable, he was on his way to Jerusalem. And we know what was going to happen in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem he was going to be rejected and be put to death, but they would rise again. And Bartimaeus brought into that and so we need to buy into that as well. Like, yes, we might stumble along the way, but Jesus is there. And that is why St. Paul speaks so beautifully in that letter to the Hebrews when he says to us that 
He knows our weaknesses. He, because He is bound to our sacrifice for our own sins. But He is that we, that Jesus recognizes our weaknesses and He's there to help us. He's there to help us to overcome our sinfulness. And so we take courage today, as Bartimaeus did, and we cry out to the Lord and we say, Son of David, have mercy on us. And allow me to be a disciple of yours. Allow me to follow your way so that I can become a better person, that I can go along the road of faith and have that faith in you, that you are my Lord and Saviour, and that you continue to guide me by the gift of the Holy Spirit. We now profess our faith as we say together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the knowledge that God is the Father of mercies, and the giver of all consolation. Let us turn to him once again in Jesus' name, to find in him our comfort and strength. We pray for God's holy church. May it be an instrument of Christ's compassion and healing for all in need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that nations may not stumble on the path that leads to peace, <coughs> but walk to that goal by the straight path of justice and mutual respect. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For victims of discrimination and prejudice, may they be accorded the respect to which their human dignity he is entitled. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We ask God's blessings and consolation on those who were blind and his support to those who worked with them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. <coughs> God called us out of darkness into his great light. May we not remain blind to his will, through stubbornness or love of self. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
We pray for the success of the Bishop's Synod, that the people will open their hearts and minds to respond to the challenge of our times in new ways. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. We ask God to comfort those who are sad because of the death of a loved one, especially those who have died as a result of the crime in our country, and ask you to receive them into his heavenly kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We know that when we gather together as a community, Jesus is in our midst. Let us each in silence present the special needs we have to our loving Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious hear us. God of light, help us to see more clearly the way you have planned for us. Give us courage and perseverance to follow you in our lives. We ask that through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the prayer we are for you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, and the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for all his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory through Christ. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world, and in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer, to love like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you love in your Son, by whose obedience we have, re you have been restored to those gifts of yours, that, <coughs> that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. 
And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And so, and never, you, you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, o Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy, these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, o Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and loving sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph Christos, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Ignatius and Saint Bernard, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray of advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis our Pope and Stephen our Bishop, Sylvester Hegel's very bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and entire people you have paid for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to have a passing from this life, be kind of buttons to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, for whom we bestow on the world all that is here. 
through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. As the Saviour's command informed by divine teaching, we pray to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and saved from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirits. In a moment of silence we pray for peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only so the word and my soul shall be. We will ring out our joy at your saving help and exult in the name of our God. We pray now together the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at me spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already here, and unite my soul wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. So, Lord Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, liberate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Permit me not to be separated from you. From the wicked foe, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me. 
I bid me come to you, that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in science, we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. We thank you for joining us for Holy Mass this morning. We pray that the Lord may continue to bless you in the week ahead, and that you may have a peaceful week. Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.